Hello, once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to a ah, bittersweet episode of Darth Tuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, sitting here in one of the many Star Wars collection rooms, okay? This is uh, more originally known as my boiler room, and room with water heater and stuff. It's an odd room, actually. Um, I remember when, uh, just, you know, a little bit of history, this home was actually uh, my grandparents' home. And uh, my parents had bought it for them. And uh, when they passed away, they rented it out for many, many years. And I remember, you know, as a kid, I would come and visit here. And I remember coming down into the basement. And the basement was, it's, it's kind of like a, a reversed uh, finished basement. Meaning that originally it was a room. It was a fully spaced room, except for this room. They, this is the only room that wasn't. You can see above me, there's rafters. And that's where I put my, like, hang a lot of my figures. Um, so, uh, what had happened was, you know, in, in all the other rooms through this door, there was essentially, um, a laundry, a laundry room space up there. There we go. There was a laundry room space and in a living area, office, had a heater, had a bathroom, um, and a bedroom over in here with a mirror. So, um, but this room was the boiler room. But if you look closely, this room was huge. I mean, it's. It's, it's basically, I mean, the original house basically went from this wall all the way to that wall. So this is the footprint of the house. So I always thought it was kind of odd. Like, what would you do in here? Um, I suppose, you know, I think my grandfather used it as a workbench room. You know, he put his tools in here and stuff. Anyway, when they passed away, they rented the house out for years and years and years. And then when I grew up and became an adult, my father kind of convinced me. He said, you know... The, uh, we were living in the town next, do next door, next to the, the town over, um, and I was teaching in this town. as a t um, And he said, you know, you're going to want to raise your child here. You should just, you know, suck it up and buy the house, you know, and then you can st just slowly fix it up. Well, that's what I did. You know, eventually I was convinced that my wife and I bought the house, uh, and then we put money into it a little at a time, and we fixed it up. And it's it's become our, our you know, our little our little castle if you will okay and the star wars portion of it pretty much stays in the basement right so it is not as sexy as quite a few basements are i mean i've shown it on, on previous episodes you can see i basically find what i can i picked up some old display cases from oh i wonder if this will turn on i don't even know no probably not i think they're i think it needs to be plugged in um yeah but i found some Old uh, display cases from places going out of business. Here's some, you know, grab a lot of these white shelves from like Lowe's, Home Depot. Here's some more of these shelves right here, okay? But again, it's a very haphazard kind of look. So I do have an ultimate dream someday of being able to, you know, do the whole recessed uh, shelving with with hidden lighting and, and that kind of thing. But don't get me wrong, you know, it's a dream and I, uh, I, have other dreams and other things that I like to do as well. One of those things involves that uh, me wanting to thin out the collection. This is only one room, okay? And you can see there's quite a lot in here, okay? But I can take you over here, and you can see here's the studio where I almost normally record from, right? And there's a whole shelving of stuff here, okay? I can take you through here, and we have lots of stuff on the on the in shelves here, on the walls, and some loose figures. Black series, battle packs. I have a whole section here devoted to a Galaxy's Edge merchandise. Oh, a little Lego Yoda stuck in there. So I and there's even another room in here. So my, my little Star Wars uh, handmade trooper clock that I did. If you you can check check back on some odds and ends episodes on that playlist. So. But you know, a year ago, I actually started really taking the idea of selling off the collection bit by bit, you know, much more seriously. Now, when I say the collection, I don't mean the whole collection. You've seen these episodes. If you watched, there are boxes of things that I order that come in year after year after year. I go to toy shows. I go on toy hunts just like everybody else, right? Every other collector. However, I want to take the time to start practicing quality over quantity. So last year, about this time, I began the process of setting up a huge yard sale, a Star Wars yard sale. I advertised it. I put signs up in Star Wars font. 
I made a big to do about it. And you know what? It was very successful. I sold off a lot of pieces of the collection, not for super high collector prices, but not for yard sale prices either. It was a nice moderate amount, which I felt was fair for items that were, you know, displayed in a basement. And uh, I was proud of that. I was happy with it. So I'm at the point now where it's time for me to start looking around for another yard sale. So this is the first of many videos that I'm going to start, you know, putting together so that I can, you know, chronicle the next big Star Wars yard sale. All right, so we're going to kind of walk around the collection together and see if there's some things we want to part with. Uh, and believe me, there's a part of me that doesn't want to part with anything. I love all of my collection. I love each piece. Everything I've purchased over the years comes from a different time frame, a different area. And I'm very, very excited about each piece that I come across. But I also have limited room. And I've said this on previous episodes. When I helped my family, when my father-in-law passed away, I had to clean out his whole house. And he collected everything never threw anything away so when i saw that the bulk of it just ended up going into a landfill now i'm sure that there were people now he wasn't into star wars collecting he had things like he loved fishing he loved tennis he loved golf and i'm sure that the you know we kept a few of his things for sentimental reasons and and his family took a few of his items but most of it it ended up getting either sold off by somebody else or put in a landfill and I, won't, I don't want to see that happen to the Star Wars collection. I want to see the Star Wars collection go spread out into the world to collectors who really want it. Okay, so with that being said, we are going to go around and start picking out on things that we are going to be willing to part with. Okay, so let's take a look. Okay, you can see I've actually, I have actually amassed quite a collection already of some items that are going to go out. This most notably is my Star Wars Pepsi cooler. Okay, this is a, um, you know, I, this is one of those coolers that they used to have inside of a, um, like a Wawa or a convenience store. Quick check. And it, it is a decent collectible, but you can see the um, yellowing that has taken place. And you can see here there has been quite a bit of uh, damage on the. This this is a very thin styrene. It was not meant to last. These were display pieces. These were these were temporary displays. So, but there might be somebody who would like to take it all over my take it off my hands. So I will be putting that out. Um, and you know, reasonably priced. Uh, obviously, clothes. These are some very good coats. Basically, what we do is we put these things out on the sell pile first and anybody who'd like to buy them we sell them for very inexpensive money and then if nobody wants them then we get to we donate them to charity but um you know we always try to you know, these are, some of these have only been worn a handful of times so now i talk about these this is something i'm kind of interested in talking about i'm not going to take them all out obviously but i want to take one out this is a oh i'm glad i took this one out this is the Bradford Exchange, basically Star Wars' answer to the Department 56, like Christmas Village, right? And it's a, this is Moss Eisley, right? Your Moss Eisley Cantina, you got Luke, you got the little moisture evaporator there, and you can light this up, although it's just really this, right, you know, the light up is really just here, and you can either light it up with batteries or with a electro, you know, you can pur purchase a wire pack. And I've purchased all of these. You can see there's a lot of boxes there. I will be selling off the entire collection. And that was one of the latest ones. Here's one of the, or one of the earliest ones. Here's one of the latest. They start, kind of switched over to doing vehicles. And this is um, a vehicle from BB-8 with Tito riding his weird thing there. There's a, I can't find the boxes for these. So I'm just kind of leaving them there for now. Yeah, I have a couple of boxes from earlier unboxings. That I'm working to do. Here's another uh, interesting piece. This is this this is this, this kind of frightened my uh, my dear my dear wife, Mrs. Darth Tuba. This is an Ewok, a life size stuffed Ewok. It's he's got a new Gunray hat on, which I'm gonna just 
I've just been kind of displaying. This used to be part of a mask. And uh, unfortunately, the latex part of the mask actually eroded to nothing. So uh, I'm going to attempt to sell the, the headpiece separate. But this actually is just missing um, a cowl. But it is a Frito-Lay um, display piece from, I think, 97. We have, of course, the... We have the toy chest with a few, we have a little Ewok in here. We have a, I think it's a Build-A-Bear Chewy. We have Yoda on the backpack. And then this, of course, get this thing to, if I can get this to touch. There's our little collapsible little laundry there. I'm not gonna show you everything, guys, uh, but there's just a few you know, highlighted items. Here's um, some of those, if you think about the Galactic Heroes. I kept these. I love the Cantina band. I really do. But I'm just uh, at the point now where it's time to part with them. And there has been some damage on these. I mean, there's a little bit of a, you know, moisture damage. So that's another reason why a lot of this has to go. Again, they're great. They were great in their time. Okay, I love them. But and then we uh, another thing I started doing was um, for the uh, collectible, collector series, any figures that, like 12 inch figures, this is kind of like when the original trilogy collection came out, they made these 12 inch figures, they're great figures. But when you compare them to the Sideshow and Hot Toy figures that have come out, it's just no comparison. So you can see the backs of these have been damaged, but there's a Stormtrooper, there's this one. Here's another, oh, this is kind of just a display I put together, but I don't really want to use these anymore, so I'm putting some of them up too. There's, of course, Jabba, his little court denizens. There is uh, Luke Skywalker's X-Wing. I realized that I have quite a few Luke Skywalker X-Wings, so I just didn't want to do that. Um, we also have some more collectible figures. Let me move these down here. We have, of course, these are a little better condition. We have the Princess Leia. And R2. It's, an, it's a beautiful collector piece. We got the Luke, Leia, and Han. I never understood this. You got you got Leia, you got Luke from from New Hope. You got Han from Empire, and you got Leia from Jedi. <laughs> so it's, it's a little odd. Uh, we got Tarkin, Imperial Gunner. I mean, these are great figures for their time. There's Amidala. Biggs and Wedge. If anybody wants to see that, here we go. Let me just... Uh... These are great. I love these two packs, you know. But, you know, the figures are... Uh, they're not. They're just not as good as the new ones that have come out. I mean, as much as they, you know... And again, you got what you pay for. These were, you know, $20, $40, $60 figure packs. And now they have these amazing... Uh, Sideshow and Hot Toys, and even Sideshow now is getting a back seat to what Hot Toys is doing. So that is uh, some of the some of the stuff that we're looking at. So we're just going to kind of do a quick peek around and see if there's anything else we want to part with. Obviously, this is a lot of vintage stuff now, so I think I want to keep hold of these. Looking up top, though, there was a couple of things I was looking at, like this little. You know, we have the Star Wars 40th pin and a nice uh, BB-8 bobblehead. I don't think, I can't think if it's Funko or not, but I think I'm going to put these here. I got a little box here with some more stuff. These, some of these are pretty new. This is a Hondo um, little plush character from Disney. A couple of Star Wars candy canes. Um, we, I, I actually ended up buying two of these, so I'm going to part with one. A couple of Tiki's. That kind of thing. So I, uh, I'm, you know, looking around and seeing most of the things here I'm, I'm still attached to a little bit. Um, so we'll probably end up keeping them for a little while longer at least. Um, but we'll see. We kept the, oh, oh Ahsoka bobblehead. I think that one's going to go. I'm, I've been, these are not Fungo Pops, but I've been thinking about parting with some things. You know, the Baby Yodas. I mean, they're cute and all. But I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I think most of the things that are on here are pretty pretty much going to stay for a little bit. You know, it, it's only a matter of time. You know, just about everything will find itself in um, in some sort of a 
cell bin here. I want to keep those dice for a little bit, but I think I'll part with this. And again, no, uh, no loyalty to any one thing. No loyalty to... I hit it up in my toolkit here. We got a couple of items here. We have, I think, uh, Ezra's blaster. This is not a very expensive blaster. And I think this uh, BB... Whoa. Okay, all right. If you have other, if you have another thing to say about it, maybe we'll keep you around for a little bit longer. Okay, fine. Uh, one of my favorite pieces is uh, this piece here, the the um, Japanese Star Wars cooler. So I'm gonna hold on to those for a while. Something else I think is gonna go, although I won't take them down just yet. Ah, uh, yes, Hamilton collection plates. They're beautiful. You can't eat off them. But they're beautiful. I love them. But they were part of the collection when there was nothing else to collect. And since then have been replaced by so many other things. So, and some of them are damaged. You can see this one. I don't know. I'll try to sell this. I might actually just kind of give this one away. As it's been broken and pieced back together. I think that might be, the, I think there were two. That might be one. And I maybe the other one is, yeah, no, maybe not. I might be the only one, so maybe I'll just keep that one as a as a reminder, you know. So, what else? I'll hold on to my Pez dispensers for a little while longer. I enjoy those. Coming around here, I mean, see, I was gonna get rid of this, the R five D four, like like remote remote control. It's the Japanese one, but R five D four is now the hero of Star Wars. And this is R2-D2. So these two I think I'm going to hold on to. I did place a few of them. There were a few other ones that I placed in the cell boxes as well. So. What else we got here? Um, yeah, some of these, you know, we have... Oh, yeah. Cantina band. Now, keep don't, don't shed too many tears. Okay. Um, I have, like quite a few of these already upstairs Doik not he's uh i think he's gonna go um because i have a, i've kept there's still a bunch of loose ones so i don't really need them in the box so. yeah so i think uh for now that's there's been a lot already placed in the cell box or you know the cell pile uh, you know but i want to make sure that <laughs> here's the funny thing is for those who or i think this yeah, i think i want to part with this one this is like a, a you know an open up thing kind of like that. Um, I think I'll put this one over here too. Thing is, this is the this is the this is the the thing about those. When I did the sale last year, right? When I did the sale, okay, it was um, quite. I it was it was more successful than I ever imagined it could be. Okay, and the reason for that. Well, I think people just, I think, you know, this is another one. I like it, but uh, yeah, no, I'm going to part with it. It's funny. It's like we're my, both my wife and I are just kind of in a purge feeling right now. We feel like what happened last year, it was like an eye-opening experience. You know, we had, we had a situation where we put these things out for sale it was an incredibly successful thing. And what ended up happening? We used the money to... Oh, dear. Hold on. We used the money. And we ended up... When we went on our Disney trip, we ended up... And we... we I, 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 did, I did... We did a lot of... We paid for all of our meals. We ended up... I did another Savi's workshop lightsaber build um, I did a, I did another build a droid so I traded you know 300 little collectible pieces and got three or four high end items which is what I'm trying to do this one I think I'm going to part with it's a great piece but it's also a great piece it's in the box I think I can ask uh, a decent amount for it 
It brought me much joy as a display piece. And I don't know if I'm going to move it just yet. I'm going to hold off on this one. But I'm thinking that the X-Wing Lego is one of the first big Lego items that they made like 30 years ago. And this, this is a display. It's only half the Lego. I liked it because it took up less room than an actual Lego would, see? It's all done with mirrors. It's all done with mirrors. So that is where I think this one, I think, I, you know, what I'm going to do is what happens is, I'm sorry, I keep like getting sidetracked. What happens is this. I, oh, this one's definitely going. Angry birds. Oh, kids, I say this many, many times. People are like, what do you think of when ever since Disney took over? What do you think ever since Disney took over everything? Is it, you like it better or do you think they just like destroyed it? Folks, this is what we had before Disney took over. This. This. Angry birds. And we liked it. Because it had the Star Wars logo, like the racing stripe. And and, and and it was sort of like, you know, Star Wars stuff. There were more sets, too. Look. You could have gotten more. Yeah. This is what we had. Hated it. I mean, I didn't know it at the time. But I hated it now. <laughs> By the way, this is not a real Class City playset. Um, this is a reproduction. But I'm thinking about opening up on a future episode, so... Angry Birds goes there. Yeah, so what happened is, you know, I put out a bunch of stuff, you know, good faith. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a nice sale. And what do you think happened? It, so people came in and bought everything, everything in the first hour. I mean, they left me with very little. So, pizza slicer. Okay. So, you know, I loved that. You know, people were into Star Wars. And it wasn't just people being into Star Wars. I mean, people see Star Wars as a huge cash cow. I mean, they they think they can take the stuff that they... Even though I was selling it for a little higher going rate than any of the... Than a lot of other people would. It was still less than what... Um, you know, it's still less than what people try to do at... You know, when you go to toy shows and stuff. So, I'm sure they would just take, take it. Pay their... Pay the money to me. And then go out and try to do... Make more money. So, yeah, I get that. But uh, I wasn't interested in that. I'm not, you know, this, this was not a collection to make money. This was a collection because I enjoy collecting. So that's, that's kind of why. So um, there are things here. Like this, it's hard to see in the dark. This is a Darth Vader cookie jar. Um, this is a Leia collector series on the speeder bike. Um, there's a Darth Maul on his Sith speeder. A little an old vintage uh, Play-Doh set. These are things I'm going to hold off, but I might consider them for future, like, you know, for sales later on. This is my little R2 shrine. But um, I think, yeah, some of these things, I think we're going to, this is an R2 uh, USB charger, which I think I'm going to take with me. R2 drink holder. that this is an r2 i think this is like the beans or bean collectible things so yeah these are these are some things i'm willing to part with so anyway now will i be selling off the whole collection will i be selling off the whole collection no it is absolutely not my intention to sell off the whole collection i see quite a few things in here that I could never part with. What my ultimate goal, okay? I mean, look, I don't make concrete plans. Plans can change on a dime. You know, you can wake up one day, have a pain in your side and go to the doctor and realize you have a terminal illness. Hopefully that doesn't happen. Or you can get hit by a bus. Hopefully that doesn't happen. But what also can happen is that you can exactly what you plan on doing. You live, you live and work and you, until you're ready to retire and you retire and maybe you want to move, you know, as a, at present, our daughter's down in Florida. I don't know if she's going to stay in Florida, but she likes it in Florida. So I think she might. So if she stays there, we want to travel down there, but this is a very large amount of space to store Star Wars stuff. All right. 
and we're, you know, when with a with a husband and wife that are both retired, you generally want to downsize. You don't want to end up with another place with just as much space as you have. So if we downsize, this all has to be consolidated, right? So we'll consolidate. That's the plan. We'll consolidate it down to what? I would say probably mostly vintage. This is like an entire vintage display here. Um, mostly maybe the vintage collection. If it stops, if it keeps going, probably not. But a lot of these vehicles, a lot of things here. I mean, the, you know, oh, here's something I was thinking about. Some of these battle packs like this, like, I mean, I this one I kept because essentially because of Cad Bane. So I, but enough is enough. You know. These two, yeah, treachery on Silicamari. I mean, these battle packs, I've, I've started, I've already started on, you know, loosening them up, right? So here's the two that can go. Um, I think these Tales of the Golden Joy, Tales of, uh, there's the Anakin figure, the 3PO figure, and the Aura Singh figure. I think all of them are going to go. Now, and some, like I said, some of it's going to, we're going to hold off because, you know, it could be, I could end up having the sale and the first day it's just a very slow trickle and I don't have to do that, you know, but then the second day I could lose everything. I do a three day sale. So the third day could come and here's another thing that's probably on the docket is see if I can put them up there, right? All of the titanium here. Those are probably going to end up getting taken out eventually. Um, but we have a seat here, a three PO here. That I can unload. There we go. Yeah, I, I'm. Um, and again, it's not that I don't love Star Wars anymore. It's quite the opposite. I love it a lot, but I love a lot of things, you know. And I and I don't want to be strapped and having every single thought of my existence having to be tied to a collection. And I feel bad for those that do. You know, I don't. I don't think collecting is something. That is meant to be um, something that is uh, trapping you, you know? So if you're in a situation like that, you know, I seriously suggest that you find time time and places to, to purge. Because purging your collection, and not all of it, just purging it of, of, of things here and there, I think is a healthy way for you to find balance, literal balance, you know? I have, you know, still have 30 items on order. So this is not, this only, you know, this only puts a dent in it. Um, another thing that might end up going is this, the car collection. I like cars, I like the, I, I love the concept, but I don't need to be a matchbox car collector. You know what I mean? It's, it's just one of those things where I kind of wake up and say, I don't know if I need that. Another thing, sports cards. I'm thinking about parting with the sports cards. So in here, there's not too much. This is, uh, you know, this I might part with the Easter egg decorating kits. Um, there might be some CDs and videos that I might pop with. I'm not really into collecting the media anymore. So we shall see. A couple little books I kept because I kind of liked some of those books. I would like to reread some of them. So anyway, all right. I kept this going long enough. Um, but if you're interested as to where, when and where it's going to be, the sale will take place in, I live in Flemington, New Jersey, which is in the central part of New Jersey, about 20 minutes over the border from Pennsylvania. Uh, it'll be on the 23rd, 4th, and 5th of June. Uh, I don't know if I would feel like putting out my entire address information. So if anybody wishes to uh, email me, darthtuba77 at gmail.com, I would be more than happy to provide you with the information. I will be putting it out in advertising. But anybody, if you are a Star Wars fan collector, and if you're within a 100-mile radius of the uh, you know this location, or you have a friend or a family member who is, I strongly urge you to... Get the word out to them because um you know it's it's 
the, everything is priced to sell, um, but priced to be fair. You know, my father was a salesman all of his life and he had a great saying. He said, it's not a deal unless we're both smiling. So don't expect to pay, pay pennies for anything. You know, don't walk in with change, <laughs> okay? Um, but, you know, you will, you will definitely spend less money doing, you know, doing business with me than you would, you know, going to a toy show, okay? And if you are someone who works toy shows and you want to build up a stock, um, I'm okay with that. Just be aware that, you know, I am, I'm okay to it up to a point. You know, don't expect me to just hand the stuff to you. I know you have to make a business, but, you know, I value this stuff too. So keep that in mind. All right, so that'll do it for this episode. I know it was just a kind of a walk and talk, but I'm excited for what, what you know, what's going to be coming up. Uh, I'm going to be working on some new signs and getting that stuff all ready. And uh, there is a lot. And, you know, in addition to this, of course, there's also household stuff, like a normal yard sale, but it's mostly Star Wars. That's the big part of it. People go in and they go, oh, look, a this, or a look at that, or a that. But the, the bulk of it is Star Wars. So can't wait to see you there. Hopefully you come out and make it. But I'll give you more information as we get closer. We still about, at the time of this recording, we still have about two weeks, or two months rather, or no, one month. One month and a week. So um, we have about five or six weeks to um, get this together. So there's going to be a little more planning, a little more prep, look forward to sharing with you. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out all, all my videos, all the Red 5 Network content. Until next time, may the Force and the toys be with you.